Dr. Didi Mieri from uh, the Technion, please welcome him to the stage. I already have just 10 minutes, so I guess I shouldn't bother. OK, hello to everybody. My name is David Mayer. I have a laboratory for cancer research in the, in the Technion. Um, two years ago, we started to ask, what are the anti-cancer effects of, of cannabis? And we started with looking on two papers that were in our field of uh, migration and invasion. And this paper showed that treating with cannabis breast cancer can block the migration of the cancers and block them to invade. And when we started to read more, we saw that also <coughs> cannabis can cause apoptosis, can cause the cells to commit suicide, something that the cancer, the cancer cells lose when they become violent and become a, a cancer. So we ask ourselves, first of all, what is cannabis? In Israel alone, there is at least 91 cannabis strains, cannabis type that can be given to the patient. So first of all, which cannabis to choose? And second, what is cancer? Cancer is a given name to hundreds of different diseases. So which type of cancer and which type of cannabis? So what we are doing, we are growing the cells in our laboratory. The cells are growing in the plate. You can, it looks like that. If you're looking on the cells on the microscope, they look like that. This is one cell you can see here. And what we are doing, we're taking the cannabis, we extract it, we create an extraction, and we use pharmacologic amount in order to treat the cells. So the first result that we got showed that when we treat uh, breast cancer, what you see here, this is lower magnification. So you see it like a kind of a structure. But when we treat with extract number one with very low amount, we saw that all the cells die. When we treat with extract number two, also the cells die. But we treat, when we treat with the extract number three, nothing happened to the cells. So first we saw that there is a definition between one type of cannabis and other types of cannabis. Second, when we take colon cancer, we saw a very similar phenomena. But when we treat prostate cancer, we saw that extract number one that killed the breast cancer and the colon cancer doing nothing to prostate cancer. The same thing with extract number two. But when we treat with extract number three that killed, that didn't do affect the breast cancer and the colon cancer, it killed the prostate cancer. And that was, I think, the basic of our research today, which showed the differentiation between different types of cannabis. There is a specificity between what is in the cannabis and what affecting the cells. When we treat normal cells, cells that growing in the plate are not normal in, in general. But at least they are not cancer. They are not have a mutation specific for cancer. When we treat these types of cells, nothing happened with this amount of cannabis. And we're using very low amount. We're using one microgram, four microgram of cannabis, which if you think about the active compounds inside, in the same amount, the same range that we're using uh, known uh, chemotherapies like Taxol, Vincrestin, Cisplatin, whatever, we're using 25 nanogram, 50 nanogram, 100 nanogram. It's very similar to what we're using here. So we want to know what, is, what are the differences between the different types of cannabis? What are the differences between extract number one and extract number two and extract number three? We sent the extract for uh, analyzing, and we got back five different cannabinoids. So the active compounds in, the, in cannabis are mainly the cannabinoids. We have also terpenes and flavonoids, but the unique uh, compounds are cannabinoids. So we got back a read of five different cannabinoids. But when we look on the extract, we realize that extract number two and extract number three have the same amount of these cannabinoids that we read. 
the, the, the amount of the THC, which is the psychoactive, the main uh, a factor in cannabis that caused the high feeling, was the same in extract number three, in e extract number two, and extract number three. And the same thing with CBD and other compounds. So we realized that it's not this compound, it's something else, at least in that types of cancers. So we, 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 tried, we went to the, uh, to the literature and we find that Lumihanus, uh, let's say four months ago, around four months ago, um, published a new uh, review and he showed that there is at least 144 different cannabinoids. Just to remind you, we got rid of five from 144. So for me as a scientist, this is nothing. I can do nothing with five from 144. I want to know which type of molecular, which type of secondary metabolite is doing the effect on the cells, okay? So, as a, and again, we have 144 cannabinoids, but we have other few hundreds of terpenes and flavonoids, it's all a mess, and we do, and we understood in that that we are see the tip of the iceberg. We're looking on five, on ten cannabinoids, but actually, under our light, under our port, there is hundreds of different molecules. So for a long time, we look around and we we hit our head in the wall, trying to understand what to do with it. Okay. And the reason that most of the world using this machine, they're using, we are using HPLC. And which HPLC, you're taking the extract, you dilute it, doesn't matter what you're doing exactly, and you run it in the HPLC. And there, in the HPLC, there is a column, and the materials are going through the, uh, the column, and through polarity, something like that, I won't go to the chemistry, they are separate by their uh, definition, okay? So, and in the end, of this column, there is a detector will say every time that a material will fall out, he will realize that there is a material. So you're getting like a map like that, like like EKG map, okay? And this saying when is that when this material is falling out after 12 minutes, after 13 minutes, 12 seconds, and five milliseconds, and every time you get this peak. But in order to know what you see, what is this material? You need something to compare. You need a standard. You need a purified compound. And today we have around one, ten, sorry, we have around 10 purified compounds. So in total, we can define with this machine maximum of 10 different cannabinoids. But to remind you, we have 144. So if there is a peak that we don't have a standard for it, we won't know what it is. Okay, so to solve this problem, we use this machine, which is called LCMS, and we're using GCMS and other uh, analytic machine, and in, in very fast in general, the idea that this machine is picking up these molecules from the HPLC when they are coming out, and if this molecule, they will take it and will break it to many pieces. And then you can define these pieces, and I'm not going to explain all the details, but I will go to the bottom line. The bottom line that after a year of work, of very uh, 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 intensive work, we create a method that in with this method from the extraction to the end of the analytic, we can identify all the cannabinoids and the terpenes in this plant. So we can today take an extract and see everything that's inside. We are not blind anymore what we are holding in our earth. We know nothing what is doing, okay? But we know at least what we have, okay? And what, you, what I am showing here, it's a heat map. And what you see here are the cannabinoids and it's going down and down. These are the names of the cannabinoids. You can recognize THC, you can recognize CBD, but many others and it's going down with more names, okay? And in, in the lines are different strains that patient can get in Israel. We see here something like 20 different strains. And what I want to show you that when it's dark, it's meaning that it's high expression in the plant. And when it's white, it's very low expression. And what you can see from that map, that actually every strain, it's a different medicine. It's totally different. There is no such a thing of 
cannabis is do good for Crohn, or cannabis is good for cancer, okay? Every type of cannabis is totally different from the other, okay? And it doesn't matter if they are, have THC and CBD, they have many other compounds that are very important and I will show it in a moment. We are doing the same thing for terpenes, but I will go on because the time is short. So what we're doing with the cancer, we're taking, we are growing the cells as, as I showed you, but we also can grow them in the plates that have many wells. This plate the down the, in, in the low, in the bottom of the screen called 96 wells. It's have 96 wells that you can do 96 different treatments. So we can take this plate and put it in a machine that we have in our lab that doing high throughput screening. This is an incubator that the cell can grow. They have the, the, the right uh, oxygen, the right uh, CO2 temperature and everything. But this is also a camera that can take images and can move between these wells. So actually we can do 96 different treatments in one plate, okay, and read it in a few hours. It's taking an images as you, see, you can see, and these images, you can analyze them and you can know actually after a few hours or 24 hours, depends how long the experiment is, you're getting like a table. And in this table, you will know how many cells died in well 7C versus how many cells died in well uh, A1, okay? And you can measure many different parameters, proliferation, apoptosis, movement of the cells, whatever we look for. This is the way we're doing a fast screen. And I want to show you a few results that can explain how complicated the fields that we're working in. So what we're looking here, let's go on, on that uh, table. So what we see, the, the different colors, are different strains that we use in that experiment. We're looking on melanoma cells and, their, and the, the, the percentage of the cells that die uh, after the treatment, after 24 hours treatment. And every color, it's a different strain. And if we look on four microgram per ml after 24 hours, you can see that there are strains of cannabis that are doing nothing to the cells that are strain like the orange one that kill 50% and there are strains that are very effective that kill most of the cells. So again, it's very important which type of cannabis we're using. It's not that cannabis kill melanoma cells. You need to know which types of cannabis you're using, okay? And if we look now on two different types of cancer, one is melanoma and one is lung cancer, you can see that the same strain, SAEA, is very effective by killing the melanoma cells, but not killing the lung cancer, or is not effective by killing the lung cancer. So again, there is a specificity and we need to know what it is. Another example, so you may say, okay, there is different amount of THC and CBD in these strains, and maybe the THC and the CBD, which are the main cannabinoids that we know are the most effective, so first of all, if we're taking purified THC, not, not uh, um, synthetic THC, THC is a phytocannabinoid that we are purified from the same strain that are effective in killing the cancer, if we purify the THC and we put on the cells, so you can see that in four micrograms, it's also doing nothing to most of the types of the cancers that we checked. In eight micrograms, it's starting to killing, but if you will see, T98G and, and the U87 are both of them glioblastoma, and we know that THC and CBD are effective to glioblastoma. But for other cancer, not in particular. It might be different cannabinoids. And if we are taking this results and we are adding now THC and CBD in the rates that all the strains will have the same amount of THC and CBD, we still see a big differences between the strains. So it's not something else, something more than what we see. So I will skip a few results here because I don't have time. And I will go to another project that we are doing, which are for, come from that results. We understood 
that having the ability to see all the cannabinoids and terpenes, we actually can know today what the patient is getting, okay? Because get, patients that are getting cannabis, we realize that every patient is getting different medicine if he's taking different strains or he's taking in different batch or from different countries. All the cannabis is totally changed. The molecules do not look the same. But we can do the follow-up today in our, with our lab because we can see all these molecules, okay? So what we suggest and we're doing, we're doing a database project. First of all, every cannabis, at least in Israel, that can face a patient, every batch that's been picked, we're working with all the eight authorized growers, and every cannabis that can face a patient today is first coming for our lab to identification. We have like a database for all the strain in Israel that we have, we know all the molecules. So if your aunt is getting a strain named Trelet from a Siach in December, I have like a barcode. I know exactly what she's getting, okay? So we create like a one arm, which is the data, the strain database, okay? And it's not just flowers. It's if, uh, if it's an extract, a peel, Whatever, can fa whatever a patient in Israel can get, we're analyzing and we know exactly what it is. Second, we're doing patient database. We're doing follow-up on patients that are under clinical trials or that are uh, using through the growers. We're doing a, a, a follow-up on that patient. We create a, a questionnaire specific for every type of disease and the patient is filling up this questionnaire with all the questions that we are asking, which type of cannabis you are taking, from which grower, what is the dosage, and then all the effects that we can ask. Did it, does it uh, increase appetite? Are you sleeping better? How much dreams do you have? Um, every question that are important in the field of cannabis. And now we want to take these two <coughs> parameters and put them together. We should, we are going, and we are, we are taking the strains and the data from the patient and we're analyzing it. We're doing a, a big data mining. We're saying, okay, this, these 25 strains increase appetite in 85% of the patients. What are the minimum compounds in that strains that create that effect? These results we are taking to animal models and clinical trials to make it evidence-based. I want just, before I'm finishing, to show you two things that are important and explain why this is important. First, these are, as I showed you before, a heat map. And these are the cannabinoids, the molecules that are in the cannabis, and these are four different extracts. And all these four extracts came from the same grower with the same genetics they just grew in different greenhouse in the same time. And you can see the differences. It's the same genetics, okay? The same strains. They put them in the ground in the same time and pick them in the same day. But they grew in different greenhouse. And look how different they are. There are cannabis that ex cannabinoids that express there and cannabis that don't, okay? So to say that I'm taking white widow and it's helping to my pain, it can help today, but not helping in a half a year because things are changing in the cannabis. This is one result that's showing how much is important. Okay, the second result, <coughs> it's, a, it's a story that we have running now in Israel. We have around 60, I heard a few days ago that it's already like around 100 kids with severe autism they get cannabis to reduce the anxiety, to improve the life quality with few parameters that we are checking, okay? And they are getting extract from three different uh, growers. It's mainly high CBD, low THC. And the reason we reached these kids started with that uh, severe autism were going together with sometimes with seizures. They have like epilepsy-like. So there was few kids that got cannabis to reduce the seizures, but then they saw that there is a lot of improvement in their behavior and their life quality, <coughs> but 
also of the parameter of autism. So we'll skip all this research, most of it done in, uh, in Sharei Tzedek, but in other places uh, in Israel today. And, and the case was that around two months ago, few kids in one day flipped out. After the treatment worked very good, in one day the anxiety came back, there was a lot of violence, there was a lot of bad results with these kids. When we checked the extract that they got, on the bottle it was written 20 to 1 CBD to THC. Is that the only thing that was important for the physician and the families? That it's 20 to 1 THC to CBD. The same thing as we're treating the, epi the epilepsy, okay? But when we checked the extract that the kids used months before and the extract that they got in the same day that they flipped out, we saw a huge differences in, in the cannabinoids, okay? It's true that the CBD and the THC stay 20 to 1, okay? But other cannabinoids like CBGV, that uh, GW just announced that starting clinical trials with autism with CBGV, or the, and other cannabinoids totally change. And you can see the pattern, how much it's different. So the strength of our laboratory today is to say, okay, so now we minimize it. We narrow it down to few cannabinoids that might be the cause for reducing anxiety in these kids. And this we know how to take to animal model clinical trials and make it evidence-based. <coughs> so because my, my time ran out, I will finish. I would just say that our laboratory today doing many things from a lot of chemist analyzing and a lot of research regarding extractions and everything from the flower to the analyzing. We have one group that doing all the cancer research, we have one group that doing neuro research, which is epilepsy mainly and brain development, and we're doing the database. These are our sponsors for this research, and these are the team that doing this amazing job. I want to mention just few people, uh, surely they did all the work to recognize the cannabinoids and the strength of the lab coming from her hands. Liran, that uh, I showed few figures from her hands that with all the, the cancer, she's the head of the cancer group, and uh, Ilana, uh, our lab, manag uh, lab manager, did I'm skipping somebody, and uh, Gil Levitus, which is the head of the Neuro group in my laboratory. Thank you very much. That's the whole thing, folks. Didi Miri, that's the whole thing.